the medication. If the depression, anxiety, changes in mood are uh, associated with the wearing off, certainly that would be the first thing in the assessment of what may need to be adjusted. If the, there is no association of depression and anxiety with the wearing off, then uh, we have an option of either adding a typical SSRI, SNRI, like Effexor, uh, Celexa, um, Wellbutrin, uh, Cymbalta, different medication. Sometimes um, uh, what I have seen in the practice that Although patients have taken uh, their medication, there's no wearing off, and they're taking an antidepressant, there's still resistance to improvement in mood and anxiety. So I have found very helpful in this situation to add uh, fish oil that has a good quality and high quality of EPA, 1,000 milligrams twice a day. Um, and also, we could add vitamin C, 500 milligrams twice a day with this. Uh, I, this has been this has provided a significant change in improvement in mood with patients. Uh, sometimes uh, this may also be uh, initiated without additional other antidepressant meditation. Yeah. So, in regards to depression and anxiety, uh, we know that exercise can make uh, uh, daily exercise uh, of uh, 30 minutes to 40 minutes uh, can change neurotransmitter uh, content for serotonin and dopamine as well as acetylcholine. Yoga, meditation, and mindfulness um, would be uh, certainly um, some of the areas to be to look at. Um, magnesium and B-complex, as well as vitamin D3, 5,000 units at bedtime can be very helpful. So uh, how do we start? You know, one of the other uh, thought about Parkinson's disease uh, and all diseases is, is, is an inflammation. So, um, there's, you know, there's always a discussion about diet. Um, Many patients that are have uh, in my practice that have had difficulty obtaining any benefit from the standard medication, um, changing to a plant-based protein diet have uh, had significant improvement in ability to tolerate uh, medications and getting more benefits, which will improve their mobility and quality of life. So, um, one, um, eliminating sugar, you know, eliminating grains, uh, that may be something to start with, or uh, the initial would be to uh, go on a plant-based uh, protein, no uh, processed food, no sugar, and you can have all your sugar from actual fruits and vegetables uh, and using uh, no grains. There is, you know, many, uh, because of uh, genetically modification and using of so much pesticides, people are now becoming more sensitive to gluten and grains. And it is an inflammation. So um, I would recommend, you know, to look at that as a possibility. Um, and if you change your diet and start with this for two months, then you can introduce one uh, group uh, at a time. Uh, we know that the, the mucus, increased mucus and saliva uh, with patients in patients with Parkinson can uh, change just by eliminating dairy products. No milk, no dairy, increasing water intake. One thing is always the question of uh, we're all guilty of not drinking enough water. Um, and I think, you know, the question has been, do you count the coffee with your total in intake of uh, fluid? You may or you may not. Um, and I think that will be important to, uh, to get at least, uh, you know, two to three liters of uh, water. One of the things is that you could add uh, basil, cucumber, you can add uh, fresh fruit, 
to increase um, your desire to drink more water. Or um, again, I'm uh, more against uh, having artificial flavoring. You can use uh, actual fruit and some vegetables like cucumbers and um, basil that and lime juice, lemon juice in your uh, water. Is there a significant allergies? I prefer to use quercetin, which is a natural antihistamine, 500 milligrams twice a day before meals, in place of uh, Sudafed or Benadryl that that have high anticholinergic properties, which can affect cognition and cause dry eyes, dry mouth, um, and possible urinary retention in effect cognition, which is of concern for us. So uh, one of the things, like, which are uh, the most uh, positive supplements um, that we can take? Um, and as far as fruit, uh, certainly wild blueberries uh, have uh, been recommended by uh, many scientists and people in uh, is an antioxidant. And one, uh, I really like stinging nettles, especially if there has been exposure to heavy metals. <clears throat> what the stinging nettle does, um, <clears throat> it provides a natural uh, supplement of iron without constipation. It uh, cle cleanses the liver of heavy metals. Uh, it works as a, a detoxifant. And uh, I recommend that uh, to use a um, either a um, cold press of uh, uh, using one cup of dry stinging nettle leaves with uh, one liter of water, and you can mix that together in a mason jar and leave it overnight. And then in the morning, you can strain it, drink it throughout the day. There is no bitterness. It tastes like uh, green tea. And you can use this for two months and then uh, switch over to capsules or start with capsules. Um, again, as allergy, uh, allergens are sugar, dairy, eggs, and gluten. And uh, you can reintroduce that um, after a couple months. So uh, as a known food allergen, cow's milk, soy, peanuts, corn, eggs, and wheat, although some people may need, may need to eliminate all grains. Um, there has been many discussions about gut health, um, uh, the biomes, and um, what food uh, we have uh, foods that we can consume that are rich in prebiotics, which again, you know, which turn into uh, probiotics and supports our intestinal system, digestive system. So uh, radishes, Jerusalem artichokes, leeks, shikama, asparagus, carrots, garlic, and turmeric. Um, uh, have been uh, supported in the literature, um, and uh, our brain does need a, a healthy uh, fat like fish oil. Uh, fermented foods have been very uh, useful, like sauerkraut, pickles, kimchi, kefir, uh, not processed yogurt, and uh, uh, kombucha. So, um, again, fluids and eating uh, uh, not processed food, simple food that you know exactly what's in it. Uh, the discussion about ketogenic diet, I think there are some people that uh, can end up with uh, kidney difficulties on a ketogenic diet. You can do intermittent uh, fasting where you can have a meal and then and no intake of food for eight hours in between. Uh, and that actually has been a practice of yogis for many, many years. 
which allows uh, breakdown um, and elimination with uh, more ease. Um, so we're talking now uh, sleep is uh, significantly disturbed and uh, interrupted in patients with Parkinson's disease. So what are the options for improvement of sleep? Um, uh, again, um, melatonin, three milligrams at bedtime, and there's some literature saying that four hours before t bedtime works for some people, whereas at bedtime may work for the other half. Uh, if you're not taking uh, uh, antidepressants, you can add a 5-HTP, 100 milligrams, which, a precursor, which is a precursor to uh, serotonin, valerian root, passion flower, um, and the other may be a bath, a meditation. There are so many new free meditations or on YouTube to, like, you can uh, add an app uh, called Calm, C-A-L-M, and uh, which is a guided meditation to help you sleep. Uh, which I, uh, many of my patients have found that to be uh, very uh, helpful. So what can we do, you know, uh, in situations of uh, erectile dysfunction? One is to always look at cholesterol, sugar level, um, eliminate alcohol. So as a support um, other than prescription medication, uh, arginine, 500 milligrams twice a day can be helpful, uh, and ginseng, 200 milligrams twice a day. One of the things is that uh, you should not take the ginseng if somebody is on blood thinners. There is a, uh, also a supportive supplement uh, by Dr. Christiane Northrup, which is called Thor, T-H-O-R. When Chris was over, yeah. So, my other concern is uh, what can we do about uh, fatigue? Uh, fatigue is very prevalent in all neurodegenerative disorders, uh, which are progressive. Um, one, uh, having the regular schedule and being able to obtain uh, a good sleep may help, but even despite of good sleep, you may still have fatigue, which we see uh, across the neurodegenerative disorders in neurology. One uh, would be to add NADH, 5 to 10 milligrams in the morning, uh, you could, you know, add magnesium, potassium, aspartate, 80 milligrams, two to three times a day. Exercise and meditation. Um, visualizations um, have uh, uh, certainly been very helpful. Other than that, you could add licorice root. Uh, this herb contains plant hormones that mimic the effects of cortisol. Uh, you can start with a small amount and gradually work up to one quarter teaspoon of solid licorice root extract three times per day. One uh, potential adverse effect may uh, increase blood pressure, which will be helpful in many patients that do have orthostatic hypotension. Dr. K, and, um, Dr. K, can you hear me, Dr. K? I'm going to interrupt yes. just a moment. Um, folks, okay. somebody has, has their television on and we can hear the TV, we can hear you talking. Could you please hit star six if you haven't already done that? I'm so sorry to all the rest of you. I don't know who it is. Um, oh, well, okay, <laughs> not paying attention. Okay, go ahead, Dr. K. I thought I could get their attention. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, Siberian ginseng can be also helpful because it's related to a precursor for DHEA and cortisol. 
in 100 milligrams two times a day can be of benefit. Um, constipation is uh, um, prevalent in patients with Parkinson's disease as everything slows down. Um, probiotics, I like Garden of Eden, uh, which is a refrigerated uh, uh, brand. Um, and I recommend 50 billion and more than 30 strains um, to be taken daily, um, once a day. So um, singing metal, magnesium citrate or magnesium gluconate, you can start with 250 milligrams twice a day and increase the dose. Uh, magnesium uh, has been used in so many uh, different areas in neurology. Um, as a muscle relaxant, uh, it helps with uh, hypertension. We've used it to prevent seizures uh, in lady, pregnant women um, with high blood pressure and delivery. Um, uh, we've used it for seizures, for uh, prevention and headaches, muscle cramps, um, which sometimes can be associated also with wearing off of the medication. So one of the things that I, I just wanted you to be aware of is that sometimes uh, uh, we need to be a, some uh, integrative alternative for complementary medication can be used in conjunction with uh, other medications. And some uh, you need to consult your physician to make sure that we're not using that together. Like, for example, like red yeast rice can be used uh, in place of uh, cholesterol-lowering medication, but not together. Either uh, either you choose red yeast rice or you would choose Lipitor or whatever medication that you are being prescribed. <laughs> Patients that are taking cholesterol-lowering medications, it's important to before, add uh, to 10, 100 milligrams daily because of all these medications do uh, deplete CoQ10, and uh, that may uh, also um, contribute um, to muscle uh, pain, uh, weakness, and fatigue. So um, one of the things is to really look at uh, how, you know, what are all the medications that a person is on? Uh, quality of life, simple things. Uh, what I'd like to do is really empower you to, uh, to empower all my patients to look at uh, what is it that they can do. Uh, and you know that you can do so much to change um, and make positive choices for your well-being uh, when it comes to intake, uh, certainly food, hum water. One of the things uh, in the resistance of taking water, uh, drinking more water, is going to the bathroom more frequently. But once you keep drinking at least three liters of water, your bladder and your body will adjust. Uh, and after a while, you may be able to actually hold uh, more urine and uh, go less frequently. One potential... Um, supplement that I would like to add. Um, I do use uh, serifolin NAC in many of my patients, and I really do like this supplement. It's a prescription supplement because um, it uh, consists of methylated um, B12 and methylated folic acid and NAC. The NAC is the N-acetylcysteine. One of the things that by um, uh, what it does is uh, it increases glutamine and increases dopamine in the brain. Uh, also, the N-acetylcysteine works as a liver detoxifant, can improve uh, balance uh, as well as cognition, and uh, for some patients, they also relax the bladder where there is like uh, less uh, spasm. So um, one, you could get the prescription um, 
and it may be about $60 per month. You could buy all of the ingredients separately. Um, the, the methylated B12, uh, there is a really good brand at Costco, which actually will provide you with a year supply, and then you would have to order the other, the folic acid and the NAC, the N-acetylcysteine. But if I could impart, uh, you know, if you are um, on a budget and you're wondering what really to take, what is the minimum amount of uh, supplements that you could take, I would strongly recommend adding B12, methylated B12, 2,500 micrograms. I would strongly uh, recommend N-acetylcysteine, starting with 600 milligrams once a day and then increasing it to twice a day. Um, and looking at what is, uh, you know, what is happening uh, in a 24-hour period, how is your body adjusting to the medication? I am a minimalist and looking at what is the minimum amount of medication prescribed that could provide you with a quality of life and we're looking and eliminating uh, any allergens, uh, any food uh, that is causing um, allergies in your system uh, and um, a lifestyle, uh, water, meditation, gratitude, um, looking at things that you could do for fun. And uh, I believe that healing comes from laughter and doing things that cause that provide you with joy and fun. Um, look at medications that are potentially blocking uh, B12. Uh, sometimes during the course of one's life, uh, there's new medications being added uh, for congestive heart failure, like amiodarone, that can cause um, dopamine increase and result in worsening of symptoms of Parkinson's. Sometimes inadvertently, although we do provide information and patients are more educated about uh, dopamine blockers, like Reglan, uh, a medication for, con you know, for motility and constipation um, uh, is not, uh, it can cause so much damage and many patients also can have worsening of uh, Parkinson's symptoms by the addition of these other medications that are given for constipation or, you know, from a cardiologist. We certainly cannot stop a medication that is given by a cardiologist, but at least, you know, uh, you will have the awareness that uh, addition of other medications can affect your overall uh, well-being and uh, uh, and worsen symptoms of Parkinson's. So hydration, uh, many patients who are dehydrated may also present with hallucination, cognitive decline, and doesn't mean that they would need to automatically add another medication. So if you are well hydrated, um, there is no infection, uh, bladder infection, which is very common, um, just hydration and um, uh, can make a huge difference in one's well-being. Um, being exposed to sun, one of the things that I was reading is that we should see and be able to look at four sunsets or four sunrises per week because it uh, um, it's like a natural antidepressant for us. Uh, one of the, the other thing, instead of using, if, if you are having, if you're producing low stomach acid, uh, you can add lemon and water um, or one tablespoon of uh, organic apple cider vinegar and half a cup of water before each meal to improve digestion. Um, glutamine, 1,000 milligram, is an amino acid that can also rebuild and improve the quality and health of the digestive tract. Sometimes uh, digestive enzymes can be of benefit if there is, like, you know, lack of motility, you feel bloated. Um, 
a balanced full spectrum um, like uh, uh, Wobenzym, which is W-O-B-E-N-Z-Y-M, can help relieve gas, bloating, and heartburn. So uh, from time, that's why we always want, when we uh, see patients in our clinic, we like to review their medications, see if there's anything else new added, uh, and to understand if medications are being taken as prescribed or what else is added to their regimen. Um, so a couple books that may be helpful, uh, The Microbiome Diet, Meditation is medicine. I find it very helpful. It's inexpensive. Um, there is a significant uh, many tapes from Dr. Joe Dispenza um, about quantum field and meditation, heart coherence, mindfulness, uh, being in the moment, being in the present, and not worrying about the past or not planning too much about the future, and enjoying... Um, every moment and um, having gratitude of what we have. Um, is there anything specific that any particular questions, uh, concerns? Um, I'm happy to take questions. Okay, folks, if you have a question, you can unmute your phone by hitting star six. <coughs> You can now unmute your phone by hitting star six to ask a question. I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I, well, I have a question. What I was I wondering is, is, what do you Go think ahead. about CBD oil? Yes. Uh, CBD oil has been, uh, it's approved. It is very helpful. Uh, I recommend plus CBD oil, um, and uh, you can take 100 milligrams several times a day. One of the benefits can be for pain, stiffness. Some people feel uh, their sleep quality is much improved with taking uh, CBD at bedtime. 100 milligrams? Right. Yeah. There is like a, a plus CBD. Uh, well, I mean, you 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 can uh, start with lower doses um, and find that probably doesn't help as much. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's you're not going to overdose on a CBD. Oh, okay. So it's not a. I mean, it's a hemp, um, and it's over the counter. Right. I, I, I just started taking some three nights ago. The first night I slept like a baby. The next two nights Good. it didn't work. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, maybe you just have to adjust, like, how much does your body need and what else is happening, right? Right, right. I, I know so, a lot yes. of people that take that, and they yes. have to keep adjusting it. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my main problem is anxiety and terrible panic attacks, and I don't know what to do about them. Right. Um, one of the things, again, is to kind of look at when are these anxieties happening. Some people may have anxiety at the time when uh, there's, you know, right before your next dose of carbidopa, levodopa, yeah, uh, yeah. Is that that's, generalized that's anxiety? Is. is it focused anxiety? Uh, so that you may need, we have to, you know, look at it to see, do you need adjustment in your medication? Do you need more of a broader coverage? One, that's an option. Yes, I do. Okay. Because it's where it's the medicine wearing off is when I get it. And I have, right. and I, I go into a terrible panic attack. Yeah, so for you, ideally, there's the best way is to adjust your medication or add something, you know, that gives you, there's, you know, to eliminate that wearing off. The, the wearing off for you presents as an anxiety. Yes. 
Okay, do we Nothing have another question? Nothing seems to help, though. Any questions? Uh, Not from just from your... the reservoir <laughs> right on side 128. Yeah. Whoa. Is there another? Is there another question? Yes, I have a question. I thought someone else was giving one. I'm sorry, uh, Doctor. Your presentation was excellent and was extremely helpful. Now, I, I parts of it I couldn't hear the, oh, yeah. the back of the room. Is any of this on the internet on a website that you have, or are your notes How available? How long does that go to? Oh, it's over. Yeah, I think that it's you know a lot of this. Uh, it's time to leave. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the foundation has a copy of this information. Yes, Dr. K, I have I recorded tonight's session and I do believe that I have your presentation that you gave in 2017. I would be happy to send that out to everybody. It, it was a slide presentation. Is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes, yeah. and then we've added, you know, a few other things, uh, but, you know, like the the core of information is there. Yes. If you yes. did this in 2017, you didn't include anticholinergic warning, but you did. I'm so glad that you did it because new doctors aren't even aware of it yet. But do you have an updated presentation? Okay. No, we talked about water, we talked about meditation. Um, you mentioned the B uh, diet. The we added some diet. But what else do we need to take with the B vitamins? <clears throat> you mentioned something else in addition to the super B content. What is it? You mentioned the super B complex that must be taken in addition, though. Folic acid, B12, and something else. A risk is nitrogen. EPA, which is the fish oil, is that for depression? No, for the, the super B complex. The, the, the full range of C I'm vitamins that you're taking. Yeah, and you take for anxiety. Something else I forgot. What can you take for anxiety? For anxiety, you could add Relora. It's R E L O R A, 250 to 350 milligrams, one tablet three times a day. But again, you know, make sure that the anxiety, I mean, this will help you. It will relax you. This is over the counter. Um, What's it called again? Can you spell that? Yes, Relora. R E L O R A. 250 to 300 milligrams, one tablet, three times a day. Okay. And, and you I, could I, add I, the I, plus CBD oil. It's it you know it looks uh, the the on the bottle it will say plus the plus sign. It's white and green bottle uh, CBD oil. That's a good quality. Charlotte's okay. Web CBD um, is also a good quality. Okay. How many milligrams? For which one? For the Relora. Uh, CBD oil. Yeah, I mean, you can start between 50 and 100. But, you know, it okay. really, again, is what is it that the person needs? You're not going to overdose on the CBD. Right. Either it's going to work or not work. Right. Everybody goes there. Just everybody. My it doesn't work on works everything, but it supposedly works for, for depression and anxiety. Right. Okay. Do we, do we have another, another question? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, how about um, swelling of extremities of the legs, of the of the ankles and the and the legs? Right. Is that so? Again, that typical? lack of movement. Hello. Uh, yes. Some of the medications that we prov you know prescribe, like the dopamine agonist. Hello. Yes, I hear you. Yeah, okay. Uh, dopamine agonists well, like Requip, Mirapax, you know, uh, can certainly uh, result in swelling of the legs. Uh, mentadine can also do the same thing. Um, and this is more like dose dependent. We have to kind of look at the whole picture. 
The other thing, again, I don't know your age. I don't know, you know, what are the other health issues? Like, is there any cardiac involvement? Um, so I, you know, I would look at your medication, your health history. Uh, is there any concerns about cardiac um, function? Okay. For the most part, they're pretty good. Okay. Um, do we have another next question? I have a question about restless leg syndrome. Okay, go ahead. Yes. What what can you do for that? Again, magnesium can be helpful. Um, fluids. Um, magnesium, like four to six hundred milligrams one hour before bedtime. Okay. Depending, are your restless leg throughout the day? Uh, is no, it again with wearing off? Is it throughout the day or only at night? It's mostly at night. <clears throat> yeah. And do you have diagnosis for Parkinson's? Yes. And uh, maybe like adding a longer acting medication overnight may also be helpful. Mm -hmm. okay. But you know, sometimes we're not able to add more medication at night because of possible uh, REM behavior disorder or hallucination. Right. Or I, I'm. I'm one for the least amount of medication, the be the better, you know. Right. So then I would recommend that you add magnesium four to six hundred milligrams at bedtime. Okay. Thank and there's you. like a different quality of magnesium, like magnesium citrate, gluconate, typically oxalate that is uh, very inexpensive. It's four hundred milligrams. Uh, doesn't absorb as well. Uh, the one that is available in every pharmacy that you see. And, uh, so what one would store. you recommend? I like uh, magnesium citrate or gluconate. Okay, thank you. Uh, and you can go to a vitamin shop to get that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next question. Oh, you keep getting close to... Any other questions? When they talk about go ahead. When when they talk about psychosis, is that related to sometimes the uh, dehydration? Some people can have hallucinations with dehydration. Yes. You can have hallucinations with dehydration with um, uh, changes in the metabolism, like changes in your sodium. Um, any bladder infection can result in hallucinations, yes. So that's why we, every time there's a new onset of hallucinations with no changes in medicine, we always want to investigate that we're not missing an infection. Right. Okay. Well, it wasn't for the why. What? I'd be dead. Was there a qu another question? If, if it wasn't for the why, I wouldn't be. Hello, can you hear me? No, we have I wouldn't be drinking water. Like I go oh, I'm sorry, guys. Food. I've got a question on one of my low blood pressure. Things. Okay. Like, uh, so, any recommendations as to what to do with low blood pressure? Mm -hmm. I, I know yeah, the usual is, you know, take, and, uh, take, take more salty stuff and drink more water and whatever, but even that's know, not helping. There's another guy. And, and I don't want to go on medication necessarily to bring my blood pressure. Start to talk. Right. So, yeah, one of the things, uh, blood pressure, um, I'm really excited about uh, doing some uh, additional work with vagus nerves. Uh, in acupuncture, I've had some patients with uh, good success working uh, and getting acupuncture for vagus nerve stimulation. Uh, so that's an option. The other thing is to add licorice root. And you can get, uh, like, start up with a quarter teaspoon of solid uh, licorice root extract three times a day and see how that works for you. Very good. 
Do you remember me from last night? I sure do. Oh, okay. okay. I saw his politician. He was just um, proof that he's full of fun. Okay. Another question. I have a question. Yeah. Uh-huh. How come when I, whenever I, whenever I exercise, my tremors get way worse? You got the Rubenstein, huh? Yes. Okay. Explain everything that went on that I couldn't talk about because I didn't know anything. I mean, one of the things may be hydration too. Um, you're expending more energy. How long does it take for the tremor to really go away once you sit down? Oh, it lasts for, for a couple of hours at least. They're way wor- After I exercise, they're way worse for a good yeah. couple of hours. What would cause that? Yeah, I mean, it could be hydration, could be sugar. Uh, are you able to metabolize uh, your storage of sugar with exercise? I mean, do you have more weakness? Um, no. And what about, uh, you know, when do you take your medication for Parkinson in relationship to your exercise? Well, I take... I. So I'm, I'm on rye, Terry, and I take it every three hours. Okay. Because after three hours, I start wearing off. Yeah. So it may be, again, like a depletion. Some patients do experience decrease in the total amount of medicine with exercise. You know, you may need to make some adjustment in the medication on the days that you are exercising by adding more. Okay. I mean, that's before or after I exercise? Before. Before. Okay. I mean, it's a trial, and, you know, we don't know, you know, right. what is the whole picture of everything else, right? Right. Is, it, is there any way I can jump in, jump in another question if nobody has one? Okay, we, this is the last question. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's, it's basically a two-parter. So one part is, um, you know, I'm going to the bathroom fairly frequently at night, and it seems to correlate with when I eat higher sugar diet. Right, um, right. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Because you may be developing diabetes. So if you're eating more, then, you know, there's like an insulin imbalance and you will have dry mouth and you will go to the bathroom more frequently. Yes. Okay. So it's really important to look at the diet, the intake. If you are craving for a dessert, I would recommend mixing unsalted nuts with honey as opposed to, you know, having a processed cake or um, dessert. I mean, you can have fruit, uh, water, check your diabetes, check your sugar. But, um, yes, that is correct. You will have dry mouth um, and and possibly uh, more spasm and increased urinary frequency. No, 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 but help me understand. A little clarification. Would would excess sugar um, impact um, my tremors? Uh, In me, um, it all depends. Your total insulin levels, right? And your total glucose levels. Do you have diabetes? Do you have, you know? No, 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 I don't have diabetes. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe something to check. Um, but I, yeah, I think this is how it's affecting you. And you may be, you know, yeah, borderline. And not okay. have been diagnosed. Right, right. It is possible. It is. I'll, I'll check that again. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, folks. Um, I want to thank Dr. Kuschaka for um, presenting tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, I learned a lot. I think all the rest of us did. You answered some great questions. So we are going to sign off now. But thank you all for joining us. And thank you, Dr. Keith, for being so patient.
Are you going to send a presentation? Are you going to send out a presentation to us all? Yes, I will send it out to all of you, okay? Thanks a bunch. All right. Thank you. Good night. Can I give you a good night? Thank you very much.